if you're seeing a lung specialist, you simultaneously should always be seeing a heart specialist. They go hand in hand. And oftentimes the lung specialists will avert and say, well, are you seeing a heart specialist? And they'll point to each other. This was not the case in Jeremy's care, which is really unfortunate. And I didn't go to the doctor's appointment with him. And so he came home with an inhaler um, and said he had uh, adult onset asthma. Nowhere in any of his care did anyone send him for heart testing or refer him to a cardiologist. I remember the month before he died coming in to the office and being like, hey, I'm going to go to my workout. What are you doing today to move your body? Because it was like becoming more and more apparent that he was so exhausted and not doing a whole lot about it. I had asked him if he would please go and have a second um, sleep study done because not only was he snoring now, but there was a different sound to it. When we got back from vacation um, for about four weeks prior to him passing away, he had been sleeping in the room downstairs in our basement so that I could get caught up on my sleep because I was starting to feel um, run down. I was starting to feel like potentially I was going to have adrenal fatigue again. The last two years between the epidemic or the pandemic, um, the shift in our family, I had two daughters that were getting married and moving at so soon at some point I had already had one that it was just overwhelming and life was a lot. How many of you have had something go wrong with you personally or health wise or have a thought come up and say, I should have that checked out and you never take action on it. So continually I felt like I was the thorn in his side. Did you make this appointment? Did you make that appointment? So the morning that he was sick, I was super frustrated with him. I had done my life coaching. I had talked to him and begged and pleaded that he would make a blood appointment to get his blood looked at and please call the sleep study specialist. And oftentimes in order to have him move and know I was serious, I did something that I now realize actually has a title to it. It's not something I'm proud of. I think a lot of uh, couples struggle on this. I stonewalled him, meaning I didn't talk to him until he did the thing because it was so frustrating. And if I didn't put my foot down and actually make an issue of it, then he didn't move for it. So that morning, I didn't even say goodbye when I went to go get my hair cut. I want you to know I love my husband. To this day, I grieve the loss of him and our family daily. And if I could go back and do it over, the, the conversations that are like B-roll in my head, did I do enough? Did I miss something? Um, my daughter had moved the October before Jeremy passed, and I remember saying to her, Daddy's not carrying anything up the stairs. Um, he's not carrying anything heavy. And she goes, gosh, Mom, you're acting like Dad is 80. And I wanted to scream and stomp my feet and say, because he's acting like he's 80. There are so many things that were taking place behind the scenes that nobody saw. And that I protected my husband because we were struggling. We were struggling in our marriage. I wasn't feeling seen, heard, or valued. Oftentimes, people who have heart disease will disassociate. And that is what Jeremy did. He was struggling um, with mental wellness. And I couldn't figure out or put my finger on it. I'm like, man, we live a really good life. How could he be so struggling? Um, we talked about, you know, him finding a different vocation, all the things, because I could not, I remember telling him, I cannot be responsible for your happy. It is a full-time job taking care of the house, running a business and taking care of myself and keeping myself up because I'm continually worried about what is going on with you. So, I'm at my hair appointment. Jeremy calls and says that he's sick. I come home. I go through all the things. Um, I'm exacerbated with the whole medical stuff, and my heart is broken for him because who wants the double flu? So I say to him, I'm going to call and get an IV. He's like, absolutely not. Here's the thing. If you have someone who's having a cardiac episode, the last thing you want to do is add more fluid to it. It could have killed him faster. 